Welcome back to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at tuples in Swift, specifically setting tuples with named parameters, defining and storing functions in tuples, and working with tuples as function return values. Tuples are primarily used when you want a variable to have multiple values or when returning multiple values from a function. Let's create our first tuple variable, bar chips, and we will give this type in parentheses, string and integer. And right away, let's set this, our string value to be chips and our integer value to be two. Now we have a tuple of type string and integer. We can access the string and integer using the dot accessor. So print chips dot zero will give us the string and one will give us the integer. Let's press play, chips. Now we can reassign our chips variable and use named parameters to make it a little bit more clear as to what our parameters mean. So we'll say chips equals, and then instead of just putting a string, let's put name colon chips uh, crisps, and then amount, we'll put five. But you'll notice if we go to print this out, chips, and we put the dot here, we're still getting zero and one instead of the name and the amount like we want to. We'll go through how to do that next. So let's create a new tuple called let salad. And this time we will specify what we want our tuple values and their variable names to be. Name, string, amount, int. Now when we go to set our salad variable, we can put salad equals, and for our first value, we can put the name salad. And we actually don't need to include the variable amount name. We can just put a value. Let's put three. This time, when we print out our salad variable, when we use the dot accessor, now we have access to the amount and the name instead of just zero and one. Press play, and we have three salads. But if you want to use the dot zero and dot one accessors, you still can do that. Print salad dot zero. Press play, and we get salad. Now let's make a tuple with four different values, including a function. Var quad equals, and we'll put a name, and call that a string. Put an amount, integer, put a price, double, and a function. Let's just keep it as a simple function for now. So it won't have any parameters and it will only return void. And this should be a colon and not an equal sign since we're not setting the value yet. And just to make it a little bit more readable, let's put some new line characters here after each value. Now let's add some values to our quad tuple quad equals, we'll put our parentheses here. For our name, we'll just put a simple string first. For our amount, we'll put one. For our double amount, let's put 1.23. And for our function, let's just do something simple like print function inside a tuple. Now we can access our tuple values normally using quad.amount, function, name, and price. But let's see what happens if we print out quad.function. You'll see that we just get something called function in parentheses. But if we want to see the function's parameters and return values, we can use the print statement using the type of parameter. Print type of and let's put our quad.function here. And now when we run this code, we'll see that we have a function that takes no parameters and returns void. To call our function, we can write quad.function and then put our open and close parentheses and run the code. And we see it printed out function inside of a tuple. Finally, let's look at how to return multiple values from a function using tuples. Let's create a function called func fill my wallet. 
we'll give our wallet a name string a price double and an amount int and then this will return a tuple of name string and value double let's give ourselves some more room this will just be a basic function that returns a tuple in the form of our name and then a price times amount in this case since amount is an integer we'll need to cast it as a double and spell return correctly so let's make three different coin wallets and fill them using our function so let cheese wallet equals fill my wallet and the name will be cheese coin let's get our cheese symbol here double click that and get our coin symbol our price of cheese coin will be 0 0.002 and the amount that we're going to purchase is 5000 and we have to add our zero back in front of the double here let's copy this and create two more wallets this will be a ghost wallet and let's put our ghost symbol in here price will be 10.02 and the amount will be 1000 copy this and let's make a salad wallet price will be 3.102 and the amount will be 1500 let's put a couple spaces here to make it line up nicely now we have three different wallets so let's make one unified wallet my wallet equals and this will be a tuple of our different tuples g's wallet ghost wallet and salad wallet now let's print out our wallet tuple of tuples and see what we have my wallet dot zero will be the cheese wallet dot one is the ghost wallet and dot two is a salad wallet so let's print out our salad wallet dot name and let's actually put this in a string so that we can interpolate it and my wallet dot two dot value run this and we get our salad wallet the name is salad coin and its current value is 4653 and just to review what's going on here we have a function fill my wallet where we're passing in a name a price per coin and an amount of coins that we're purchasing and this whole function returns a tuple and that tuple contains a name and the current value of the wallet. And the value is retrieved by taking the price and multiplying it by the amount of coins we have. So then we have one final tuple, my wallet, that is filled with three separate individual wallets. And each of those wallets are tuples. So we have a nested tuple here with my wallet. And we can access each individual wallet inside of this nested tuple by using the dot zero, one, or two accessor and then grab each individual tuple value of the wallet using the dot name or the dot value accessor. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and remember to hit the dinner bell.